Hey, and welcome to this Friday's Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Every Friday I answer your questions. So if you have questions, just let me know and next Friday I will answer them. So let's jump into the first question. I would like to do a book page flip animation where you see two pages and the right page is flipping, being pinned to the middle, just like a normal page would flip. So far the tutorials I could find seem to focus on having just one page. So yeah, he's trying to make a book animation. I don't know exactly how he would like to do it. Like the, I saw when I started um, searching for it, like 3D models and just animations and wiping stuff and I found three interesting guides which is on the fusion page and I will copy all three of them down here in the description but I think the one that you are looking for is the last one the third one so we will open this one up and this is from William Justice and in this video he explained a couple of different animations with fusion that you can do on the desktop and I will show you now the flip page thing the last effect is a page turn transition it's based off of a video I did a long time ago and now I took it and set it up so that you can use Yeah, and in this video, he explains how he does it. Later in the video, he makes a tutorial and everything. So definitely to check out his video. I think this is good enough. I would do this now in the desktop version first because I'm not entirely sure if all of those animations will work on the iPad, especially because I did my research and a lot of 3D stuff. I'm not entirely sure if this works and it's also time consuming and I'm not the best fusion guy. So check it out. Let me know if it, this works. Second question, how do you use plugins for DaVinci Resolve for the iPad? Do they need to be made specifically for the the iPad and if not how do you set them to be used on the iPad very interesting question and I'm very honest I think this is the second third or fourth time fourth time here in the Q&A series so just start watching the Q&A series because I answered this a couple of times but I want to answer this again because plugins first of all what do you mean by plugins because there's so many different ways how you can bring external material into DaVinci Resolve on the iPad so let's talk about first those kind of transition things and templates we can create with fusion and other stuff that you can even buy like for example yesterday and the day before before, I, ex I showed you an easy way how you can get, for example, plugins from Motion VFX. By the way, they have a summer sale. Just click the link in the, in the description. You can get those packs and they work on the iPad. So the thing is with those fusion templates, some work, some not. And the reason why some not is because not all of the features of fusion, like on the desktop we have right now. I mean, officially fusion isn't launched, but the cool thing is it's in the background. So that's why a couple of features already work. That means when you use an effect that uses the ones that work, then it works. So for example, for the transition pack that we did for our masterclass, for example, everyone who is in the masterclass has a transition pack, it's included. They are optimized for the iPad. So they work on the iPad. But if you, for example, buy a different transition pack from anyone out there, it could be that a couple of them are not even working on the iPad. This is one to consideration. And then you're talking about plugins, but there are also audio plugins, for example, VST. The iPad doesn't support VST. So even if DaVinci would support VST, which originally they do, because on the desktop you can have VST plugins, on in Windows, for example, you would just drag and drop them into the VST folder that doesn't work on the iPad. There's another format which works, but not yet on DaVinci Resolve, but in Logic, for example, or LumaFusion, it's already working there. But I made a complete video about this and I said that in my other Q&A videos as well. This was the video about when I explained Logic, how Logic just destroyed Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. And I think in this video, I talk about 10, 15 minutes straight about different types of uh, audio plugins. But to just answer the last part of this question again, just copy them into the app of DaVinci Resolve. So if you come to the Files app on my iPad and I go to DaVinci Resolve here under Fusion, you can create here by templates your own kind of templates. And if you look here, a couple of those DRFX are from uh, Motion VFX or even our own Phoenix Transition Pack is a DRFX. You just copy and paste them in here straight into the app. So with DaVinci Resolve iPad, can you please make a video on how to locate missing clips relinked to the Photos app? When you try, it just brings you to the files. I moved Photos files and it still doesn't work. So that is a very interesting question. And you're right. If you have like a project where you have missing files, you will have this icon here on the top. And when you click this one, it will say relocate and you can open it, but it only opens the files app. You're correct. It doesn't open on the Photos app. But the funny thing is though, I tried to recreate that and I used two videos from my Photos app and I put them into DaVinci Resolve. And then after I put them here onto the timeline, I deleted both video clips from my Photos app and I came back to DaVinci and they still work. Then I went back to the Photos app and I deleted them even from the deleted folder. And I went back to DaVinci 
and they still worked. So somehow Da Vinci still had access to those videos while they officially were deleted. So I had a hard time to even recreate your circumstances. But there is another way. If you come to Da Vinci Resolve and you come to the edit page, it's important because when you're just on the cut page and you do right click, you don't get all of the informations that you can get on the edit page. And we need now the edit page. You can re recreate that by, for example, just right click on any uh, source material and say unlink selected clip. And then you get here, boom. And then this clip will be unlinked. So, and the problem you are talking now is like, let's say you even take the photos from your photos app into the files app, okay? If you still miss just one file, then you get the following error. So for example, here I go to locate and here under downloads, there is the video that I just unlinked, but the other video that's missing is not in here. So if I say now open, it will try to scan it and one clip could not be found. So one he found, one not. And the problem right here is that I can't say okay. So it can, I can only say cancel. And that means it's breaking up this uh, process. So it doesn't even relink that one. But the solution for that is that you right click on that video that you have, right click, and then say here on the bottom, relink selected clips. And now I can go to this specific clip, this one here, to the folder, say open, boom, and it has it. So one more advice. In our DaVinci Resolve iPad beginner to master course, we even teach you that you shouldn't put the photos into the Photos app. I tell you one simple example. Whenever you wanna take your project and you wanna bring this from your iPad to another machine, you will have problems because you need the source material. So the better way is actually to always set up a folder where you have your project and also your material. And the best way is on an SSD or at least on the files app so that it's easier to copy everything over. If now, for example, I wanna bring everything over, I have to go through the process, copy them to the files app, all to one folder, and then have to relink everything. So if you do this in the first step, when you start a project in DaVinci, you don't, even, you don't even have to think about this anymore in the future. But I get it, if I make a very small project with like just two or three clips, I do the same. Many of my YouTube videos where I don't save my core material, where I just make the video and it's done, I keep it in the Photos app because of I'm lazy. Okay, I get it. But if you have a bigger project, I would recommend you, you follow the steps from the masterclass where we teach you how you can set up everything on your hard drive. So it's easier for you to go from different machines or even a different iPad, right? So you can even take this to a different iPad and work on that iPad as well. So last question, if I purchase the studio version, are all of the feature pages appear on the bottom or do I still need to Bluetooth and the keyboard and get the pages? Very interesting question. I thought the same at the beginning, but so the point is, no, the studio has nothing to do with the pages. Officially, we only have the color and the cut page. That we still have access to all of the other pages is because Da Vinci or Blackmagic decided that they didn't take it away. They are still in the background and probably when they are ready, they will launch them. The studio version gives you access to additional features like AI features, like magic mask, like voice isolation and those kind of things, but has nothing to do with those pages. So to answer the question, because I saw this question a couple of times, people are thinking, like I had once one guy, he was complaining about, I bought the studio and now I don't see all of the pages. Nowhere, Blackmagic doesn't even say that, that you get all of the pages. That has nothing to do with buying the studio version or not. So look, before you buy something, look always into what it's saying there, not assume something. I say that because one guy, remember, I, I forgot exactly his words, but he was basically being angry at Black Magic. He bought the studio ver version because he thought he gets all the pages. And then he still didn't have the pages. <laughs> and I was just laughing because you, you can get, just go into the shortcuts and then you have the pages. You don't even have to pay the studio version anyway. So yeah, no, you don't get them. You still need a keyboard or a Bluetooth keyboard to open them because after you restart DaVinci at the moment, because they're still officially not launched, they disappear. And then you have to bring them back with the shortcut. That's it for this week's Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. If you have questions about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, just let me know here in the comments. We we'll see you in the next video. If you like this series, hit like, subscribe, ding a ding in the bam bang gong, and I wish you an amazing weekend. We we'll see us in the next video. I'm Daniel, bye.